Hey there royal watchers and drama lovers. Welcome to another episode of Untold Royal Secrets. It's your favorite royal critic, back at it again with some piping hot tea that's got tinsel town buzzing. Grab your popcorn and settle in because we're about to dive deep into the latest drama surrounding everyone's favorite royal outcasts, Macon and Harry. And let me tell you this story is juicier than a ripe peach on a summer day. So now, Oprah Winfrey, the queen of all media, throws this massive political shindig for none other than Kamala Harris. We're talking A-list central here, folks. Meryl Streep, Julia Roberts, Brian Cranston. Basically, if you've got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you were probably there. It was the kind of event where even the catering staff probably had an Oscar or two. But wait a minute, where are our favorite royal refugees? Where's the dynamic duo of dysfunction, Harry and Meghan? Nowhere to be seen, my friends. And let me tell you, in Hollywood, that kind of absence speaks volumes. It's like showing up to a party and realizing you forgot to put on pants. People are going to notice, and not in a good way. Now, I know what you're thinking. But aren't Meghan and Harry tight with Oprah? Didn't they do that total interview that had the royal family clutching their pearls? And you'd be right. Which makes their absence even more suspicious than a politician's tax returns. Let's break this down, shall we? We've got Oprah, arguably the most powerful woman in media, hosting an event for Kamala Harris, who could be the next president of the United States. This is the kind of event that PR dreams are made of. It's a chance to rub elbows with the elite, to be seen supporting a groundbreaking political figure, to remind everyone that you're still relevant. And Meghan and Harry, our favorite attention-seeking ex-royals, weren't there. It's like a vampire missing a blood drive. It just doesn't add up. Now, the official line from Camp Sussex is that Meghan was busy with her new jam business, American Riviera Orchard. Yeah, you heard that right. Apparently, spreading preserves is more important than spreading influence in Hollywood. I mean, come on. Are we really supposed to believe that Meghan never met a camera she didn't like Markle chose jam over glam? That's about as believable as me turning down a plate of nachos. But here's where it gets really interesting, folks. According to my sources, and trust me, these are some deep throats in the Hollywood Hills. The real reason for their absence is far juicier than any overpriced bougie jam. Word on the street is that Oprah herself gave them the royal boot. That's right, the woman who once gave everyone in her audience a car apparently decided to give Harry and Meghan the gift of get lost. And can you blame her? Apparently, our dynamic duo has been blowing up Oprah's phone like teenagers with their first crush. We're talking calls, texts, emails, probably carrier pigeons and smoke signals too. They've been so desperate for attention that they've crossed that line from endearing to restraining order territory. Now, I've been in this business a long time and I've seen my fair share of desperate celebrities. But this? This takes the cake, frosts it, and then smashes it in their own faces. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion, except the car is a Rolls Royce and the driver keeps insisting they know a shortcut to relevance. Let's take a moment to appreciate the irony here. Meghan and Harry left the royal family because they wanted privacy, right? They were tired of the constant scrutiny, the paparazzi, the pressure of royal life. They want to forge their own path, make their own way in the world. Normal goals, sure. But what have they done since then? They've been about as private as a Kardashian at a red carpet event. They've done interviews, they've written books, they've made documentaries, all spilling the royal tea and airing the family's dirty laundry. It's like they left the fishbowl of royal life only to jump into the shark tank of Hollywood. And now it seems they've finally jumped the shark. They've gone from being the darlings of the media to being the desperate ex who can't take a hint. It's a fall from grace so spectacular it makes Icarus look like he just tripped over his shoelaces. But here's the thing that really gets me, folks. It's the missed opportunity of it all. Harry and Meghan had a chance to do something truly groundbreaking. They had the world's attention. They had resources. They had a platform. They could have used their unique position to bridge the gap between traditional institutions and modern media. They could have been innovators, trailblazers. Instead, what do we get? Constant complaints about privacy while simultaneously courting the spotlight. Preaching about compassion while burning bridges left and right. Talking about wanting to make a difference while seemingly doing very little actual work. And now it looks like they've even managed to alienate Oprah, the woman who gave them their biggest platform yet. When Oprah Winfrey, the queen of second chances and her moments, decide to too much drama, that's when you know you've really messed up. But let's zoom out for a second and look at the bigger picture. This Oprah event wasn't just any old Hollywood party. This was a gathering of some of the most influential people in entertainment, coming together to support a potential future president. This was power with a capital P, and Meghan and Harry weren't invited. Let that sink in for a moment. 
The couple who once sat across from Oprah and spilled royal secrets to millions of viewers worldwide weren't deemed important enough to be included in this gathering. That's not just a snub. That's a full-on rejection from the Hollywood elite. It's like they've been demoted from the A-list to the don't call us, we'll call you list. And in Hollywood, that's a fate worse than death. It's the equivalent of being sent to the kids' table at Thanksgiving dinner, except the kids' table is in another state and no one bothered to give you the address. Now, I can already hear some of you defending them, but you might say, maybe they really were busy, maybe they had prior commitments, maybe they're focusing on their family and their new ventures. And to that, I say, wake up and smell the overpriced coffee, folks. This is Meghan and Harry we're talking about, the same couple who flew across the Atlantic to crash the Queen's Jubilee celebrations, the same dude who can't seem to go a week without making headlines. The idea that they'd willingly skip an event of this magnitude is about as likely as me turning down a free trip to the Bahamas. No, my friends, this absence speaks volumes. It's not just about missing a party. It's about being excluded from the corridors of power. It's about watching from the sidelines as the real movers and shakers of Hollywood come together without you. It's about realizing that maybe, just maybe, you're not as important as you thought you were. And let's talk about that jam business for a second, shall we? American Riviera Orchard. It sounds like something a trust fund baby would come up with after a weekend in Napa Valley. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for entrepreneurship, but going from duchess to jam maker? That's not a career pivot, that's a career nosedive. It's like watching a swan try to be a duck. Sure, they're both birds, but one's definitely got more grace than the other. And right now, Megan's looking about as graceful as a bull in a china shop. If the bull was wearing designer labels and insisting it knew how to make artisanal preserves. But here's the real kicker, folks. While Megan and Harry were presumably at home, stirring their jam and licking their wounds, the event they missed was a smash hit. Millions of viewers tuned in to watch Hollywood's finest rally behind Kamala Harris. It was a masterclass in star power and political influence. Meryl Streep, the grand dame of cinema herself, even made a special appearance by a video call. Can you imagine the impact if Harry and Meghan had been there too? It could have been their chance to rehabilitate their image, to show that they're still players on the world stage. Instead, they left on the outside looking in, probably wondering why their phone isn't ringing. It's a cautionary tale for anyone who thinks they can conquer Hollywood on charm alone. This town eats charm for breakfast and asks for seconds. And let's not forget the irony of it all. Here's a couple who left the royal family because they wanted to escape the rigid protocols and stuffy traditions. They wanted freedom, they said. They wanted to chart their own course. Well, congratulations, Harry and Meghan. You've charted your course right out of relevance. You've traded the constraints of royalty for the cold shoulder of Hollywood. Was it worth it? Was the jam business really more important than being in a room with some of the most powerful people in entertainment and politics? But wait, it gets better. Remember how I mentioned that my sources say Oprah blacklisted them? Well, apparently it's not just Oprah who's had enough. Word on the street is that a lot of Hollywood's elite are starting to see Harry and Meghan as more trouble than they're worth. Think about it. Every time these two open their mouths, it's drama. They're either complaining about the royal family playing the victim card or making grand pronouncements about how they're going to change the world without actually doing much changing. Hollywood loves drama, don't get me wrong, but it loves controlled drama. The kind you can switch on to the cameras and switch off when the director yells cut. Harry and Meghan. They're like a reality show that never stops filming. And in a town where image is everything, that's a liability. It's like they've forgotten the first rule of Hollywood. It's not about who you are. It's about who people think you are. And right now, people are starting to think that Harry and Meghan are more trouble than they're worth. Meghan and Harry thought they could waltz into Tinsel Town and conquer it with their royal charm. But they're learning the hard way that in Hollywood, everyone's royalty until they're not. And right now, the King and Queen of Sussex are looking an awful lot like the court jesters. But hey, who knows? Maybe this is rock bottom. Maybe this humiliation will be the wake-up call they need. Maybe they'll finally realize that constantly airing their grievances and playing the victim isn't a sustainable career strategy. Or maybe they'll double down. Maybe they'll release another tell-all book or do another explosive interview. Maybe they'll try to start their own political movement or launch a lifestyle brand that goes beyond jam. Personally, I'm betting on a line of tiaras made from recycled materials. You heard it here first, folks. Whatever they do, you can bet your bottom dollar they'll be here, watching it all unfold, ready to spill the tea and give you my unfiltered take. Because in Hollywood, the show must go on, even if nobody's watching anymore. This is your friendly neighborhood critic signing off. Remember, in this town, you're only as good as your last hit. And right now, Megan and Harry are looking like a box office bomb.
But hey, in Hollywood, there's always a chance for a sequel. Stay tuned, folks. Something tells me this saga is far from over. And hey, if nothing else, at least we've got some fancy jam to enjoy while we watch this train wreck continue. Just remember to spread it on your toast, not on your reputation. Until next time, keep it real, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube fam.